She looks unfamiliar, wearing cold eyes that he does not recognize, covered in tattoos, and wielding a massive weapon known as the <coughs> Holy Scripture. Shiki knows what this means, that because now he is Roa, Ciel has a responsibility to kill him. Ciel begins to reveal her true motives for coming to the school, that being to investigate Shiki from the get-go. <coughs> Shiki begins to question whether the kind senior that he always respected was a lie. It's then that it's revealed that the memories of the bakery girl were actually Ciel's memories, as she used to be one of Roa's previous hosts. However, for some reason, her body survived even after Roa left her, and thus she was rendered unable to die as long as Roa still existed. As such, Ciel fights Shiki while he tries to run. Eventually, though, he is cornered and ultimately decides to give up, Aww. saying that even though it was a lie, their time together was fun. In the end, Ciel can't bring herself to kill Shiki, breaking down crying and apologizing. Ciel confesses all the sins she committed, saying that she has to die for all the people she killed and for hurting Shiki. However, Shiki denies all of it, telling her that she deserves happiness just like anyone else, confessing his own love for her and finally bringing Seal happiness as oh, they sleep goodness. together. Here we go However, the next again. day, Shiki goes out while being possessed by Roa and is ambushed by Arkway, who pins him down. Arkway then orders Shiki to leave Seal and become her servant to find a solution when dealing with Roa, but Shiki denies her proposition and slices her death line before meeting with Seal in the street. They run to the school where Seal decides to fight Arkway in order to protect Shiki, leading to her own defeat. Finally, Shiki and Arkway face off, with Shiki managing to massively injure Arkway while Shiki himself sustains equally massive injuries. Shiki soon realizes that he's almost become one with Roa, and thus decides to kill himself in order to end Roa's existence for good. Arkway understands, telling Shiki how much she ended up liking him before disappearing, and Shiki stabs himself, cutting his own lines of death while faintly hearing Ciel's crying voice in the distance as his consciousness darkens. Suddenly, Shiki finds himself alive in a hospital bed, with everything in the world being perfectly fine. However, as Dang, Shiki spends man. his day, he notices things are off, such as his maid Kohaku treating him normally despite the apprehensible actions that he did to her while he was possessed, as well as the small visions of a young boy with a scar on his chest. While talking to Ciel, he realizes that the world that he was in was too perfect, and that it was a dream before his death. Until, he runs into the kid with the scar, and soon realizes that kid was him before the accident. If he was Tono Shiki, that child before him was the original, Nanaya Shiki, the Shiki before the accident. Nanaya tells Tono that if he were to wake up, a much sadder world would await him, that he may not even survive, that if he were to continue dreaming, he could live I'm happily. About to say, vampire now? However, Tono I'm tells bitch. Nanaya that such a happiness vampire? would be a selfish lie, and that he would rather live in a real world of nothingness. Acknowledging this, his past self as Nanaya disappears, with Tono now forgetting his entire past completely, with no possibility of ever recalling it ever again. As such, Shiki wakes up to see the morning sun and Ciel's crying face, before the two confirm each other's existence and live together, happy at last. Moving on from the near side routes, we next touch on Akiha's route. In this route, instead of noticing Arkway, he notices his classmate, Satsuki Yumizuka, wandering in the city his friend that was Word. supposed to be missing. When he finds her, he sees Satsuki covered in blood huh. and surrounded by corpses, revealing that she was the one who sucked their blood, as she had become a vampire. When he goes home, his sister Akiha treats the injuries that he sustained while fighting the undead, before he spends the next day looking for Satsuki. Before he leaves at night, he runs into Akiha one more time, who for once seems to be genuinely worried for wow, his safety, that is broken asking if she can come back soon. Shiki then reassures her that he will return, before going out to search for Satsuki once again. He confronts Satsuki, who nearly manages to convert Shiki into a vampire if Shiki didn't use his own mystic eyes to kill the vampiric what? blood inside of him. In the end, Shiki resolves himself to kill Satsuki as mercifully as possible. In her final moments, Satsuki reveals that she didn't blame Shiki for his actions and that he was still a kind person, passing peacefully in his arms, apologizing for what she had done and telling him that he did the right thing. This, however, still <laughs> scars say, Shiki, man. who realizes that he could do nothing to help her and could only end her misery. When he comes back home, he sees Akiha and embraces her in his grief. Akiha coldly tells him that she cannot solve his own problems, but says that, regardless of what happened, he managed to keep his promise and return home, and that such a thing alone was worth taking pride in. Shiki spends the next day with Akiha and his maids at home, having a welcome party to celebrate his return. 
Akiha also, interestingly enough, transfers to Shiki's school, which leads to some interesting shenanigans between her and Shiki's friends. However, Shiki begins having memories of his past that leave him stunned and confused about his identity, as well as dreams of him killing various people and drinking their blood. With this, he begins to suspect that he himself is a vampire and goes to CL for help. Shiki, the two fight at school, over, where Shiki is unable to bring himself to kill CL despite that. CL then uses this as solid proof that Shiki is not the killer. However, both end up suspecting Akiha to be the vampire as Roa tends to reincarnate into children of powerful families, which means the Tono are a prime candidate. As Shiki confronts Akiha, he slowly remembers the true events of his past and that he wasn't the original Shiki Tono. They discover that Roa had reincarnated into the original Shiki, and he had become a maddened dead apostle hell-bent on reclaiming his original identity and killing the Shiki who took his place. However, as they fight, Akiha comes in with white crimson hair, who drives the original Shiki off, but is left in a weakened state. As the past of the Tonos are revealed to Shiki, it's revealed that Akiha also inherited abilities of demonic blood that allow her to manipulate the life force of people, meaning Akiha can both take and give life force to others. The truth was, when Nanaya Shiki was fatally wounded, Akiha gave half of her life force in order to keep him alive. Since then, she had always been sharing her own life force with Shiki, thus creating a heavy burden on her own well-being. Soon, they understand their own feelings for each other are somewhat romantic, and that they care for each other a lot, consummating their love, not as adopted siblings, but rather, lovers. Fun! This enrages the original Shiki Tono, who claims that Shiki had stolen everything from him. In anger, he kidnaps Akiha, and due to her weakened state and lack of power, Akiha slowly loses her own sanity and becomes a mindless beast. Oh, so As the two like Shikis confront each other, there. the mindless yeah. Akiha attacks the original Shiki Tono and runs off. Shiki then follows her and sees that Akiha has now lost her sense of self as a result of sparing her life with him. As such, he decides to kill himself so that his life force will return to Akiha, so that she may return back. Akiha then soon wakes up later, feeling a little different and thus realizes what had happened. However, as she walks in her own garden, she finds Shiki's knife and feels a faint heartbeat. It's then she realizes that Shiki was indeed alive, somewhere, and that she can happily await his return. The route after that is Hisui's route, and it plays out very similarly to Akiha's route for the beginning. Except rather than kill Satsuki in a merciful way, Shiki was overtaken Wait, by his Nanaya blood and dispatches her with inhuman level routes, efficiency. Right? But now she's like regular he also remembers and thinks about the two girls in the Tono Mansion. One that played with him often, and another he didn't quite know well, but who he noticed watching all of them from a window in the mansion. As such, when he returns he meets Koaku first whose cheerful personality makes him think that she was the girl who played along him and Akiha when they were young. He is also introduced to Hisui, and believes that she was the girl that she didn't know quite well, and was thus quite curious about her. However, he once again begins having visions where he dreams of being the original Shiki, and due to the original Shiki's actions, he begins losing his own sanity and grip on reality. His life force begins to get assimilated by the original Shiki, and he can no longer tell whether or not he was himself anymore. He begins thinking, feeling and seeing things, fearing that he'll also hurt everyone around him. He also becomes progressively weaker, to the point he can barely move, and the final nail in the coffin ends up being that he overhears Akiha telling Kohaku that they're going to eliminate Shiki Tono. As he has yet to become aware of the original Shiki's existence, Shiki thinks Akiha is talking about him, and thus due to all those things, Shiki locks himself in his own room, refusing to go out or let anyone in. Akiha and Koaku go out in order to find a deal with the original Shiki Tono, I knew leaving Hisui alone with the mansion though. with Shiki. It is in this time when Hisui would just you simply visit Shiki's about room, this. simply knocking on the door and patiently waiting, begging him in tears that even if he couldn't believe in anyone, he could believe in her. It is then where Shiki remembers Goku that when he was younger, before he got himself acclimated to the Tono siblings, the red-haired girl who used to play with him would often knock on the door and ask him to come out and play with them. She would do so every day until he did, and it dawns on him. The real identity of the girl that played alongside him was actually Hisui the whole time. He then finally lets Hisui in, asking her oh, why yeah, it seemed that Koaku and Hisui had traded places. Chip, Hisui right? states that she was never an energetic right? girl, that she merely There's only no Shiki. followed Shiki as lead, and was traumatized after I'm seeing Shiki's near-fatal accident. Since then, Koaku tried to act happy and energetic in order to cheer up Hisui, and over time, the two ended up swapping places. Hisui then clarifies everything, revealing that Shiki was not a vampire or demon, but rather an esper like her and her sister. 
Hisui and Kuoko have the power of synchronization, which allows them to share their life force with another person through exchanging body fluids. The two confess their love and, well, make love. And thus, Hisui is able to share her life force with Shiki as well. Shiki, now After able that, to walk yeah, and think uh, properly again, yeah, then goes to Makihisa's study to learn about his own past and the past of the Tono family. He learns that Makihisa was unable to bring himself to kill his own son, so he simply locked the original Shiki up and made it so Shiki Nanaya would think that he was the original Shiki Tono, replacing his own memories, finally clarifying the gaps that Shiki had. Also, he finds a rather disturbing diary that merely has the words help me scribbled on all of the pages, with the final page having a single written paragraph about a person becoming a doll. Now understanding everything and remembering his past, Shiki goes to confront the original Shiki and help Akiha with Hisui coming I've alongside. Seen chat, man. In the school, Akiha fights the original Shiki, having the upper hand before the original Shiki attacks Kohaku. Akiha instead runs in the way of the attack and sustains a fatal wound. The original Shiki, realizing that he just killed his own sister, runs away in panic, while Akiha slowly passes away on the ground. Now, with the loss of Akiha, Shiki confronts the original Shiki and kills him. With the original Shiki revealing that he never knew the identity of the imposter Shiki, and that he wasn't anything like he had heard. Okay. After the incident, Shiki thinks about what happened and pieces everything together. He then confronts the true culprit of the incident, the one who orchestrated all of the events from the shadows. The one who made the original Shiki go crazy and attack innocent people. The one who distracted Akiha, leading to her death. Koaku, the true the identity kids. of the girl who looked at them in the mansion. It's revealed that as synchronizer psychics, Koaku and Hisui were brought into the household in order to keep Makihisa sane. As such, Koaku was raped by Makihisa for years, left alone as everyone else played together. She was a broken person who felt no emotion, and because of her state, she had nothing left in her mind other than to take revenge of the entire Tono family. Koaku revealed all of this with a smile on her face, acknowledging that she was a broken doll. Please, she also wanted to understand me, happiness and thus gave Shiki her ribbon, the only thing that she owned to hopefully form a bond, but when Shiki gave the ribbon to Hisui instead of her, she literally lost everything. She then stabs herself with a knife, saying that she has no more purpose. She confesses that she ultimately doesn't even know what she felt, and that she probably still liked Akiha Tono as a close friend, yet still killed her regardless. It is then, Koku dies inside a crying Shiki's arms, who mourns for everything that he had lost. In the end, this despite everything, like Shiki and Hisui live a happy life together. They were able to accept the past and smile again. Finally, after so long and after so much, they spend their time together, simply content. Finally, in Koaku's route, it plays very similarly to Hisui's route at first, is, including is the fact that Shiki initially human, mistook the maids like for each other. Human, like not, However, unlike like the Hisui route, like he begins to get closer to Koaku instead, and notices moments where she puts down her facade, as well as begins to figure out the truth behind Koaku's identity during the route. He also gets taken over by his murderous Nanaya impulse due to consuming drugs that Koaku gave him, and coincidentally, runs into the original Tono Shiki. Unlike the other routes, well, neither recognize each other and merely see each other as strangers yet fellow people who are able to kill. They buy some canned coffee and talk about what it means to commit murder, and strike their own strange friendship. The original Shiki decides to go to a different town, as two killers would simply get in the way of each other leaving Shiki with no memory of this event when he woke up. Ultimately though, Akiha still goes and kills the original Intense. Shiki in this route due to Kohaku's influence. However, as a result, she herself begins getting taken over by Roa's power and becomes a more possessive, unhinged individual. She begins demanding for Shiki to be with her. However, Shiki can't bring himself to. And as a result, Akiha begins draining his life force, rendering him unconscious. When he comes to, he finds Koaku taking care of him, and that he had been rendered in a weakened state. He tells Koaku that he has to confront Akiha, and before he leaves to do so, he gives Koaku her ribbon back, saying that he was very happy that she had waited for him all this time, and confesses his feelings for her that he's obtained wow. since then. This finally gets Koaku to feel hope again as she cries for the first time in years. Before that, Koaku and Shiki make love in order to make use of Koaku's synchronization to return Shiki's energy. Whilst doing so, Shiki teaches her how to love someone properly. Koaku finally sorts out her newfound emotions and wants to try and make up for everything that she's done and drugs Shiki and goes to confront Akiha herself. 
Shiki wakes up half asleep and slices himself in order to stay awake using pain. He runs to school and confronts Akiha, who has tied up Koaku using her hair. Akiha, enraged that Koaku is now sharing power with him, oh. inflicts a massive injury on her and then battles Shiki. Ultimately, Shiki is victorious, however, he cannot bring himself to kill Akiha. And Kohaku, who managed to survive, keeps Shiki from taking her life. Akiha then finally accepts the events and calms down. Weeks later, Kwaku decides to work for a branch of the Tono family in Nagano, and eventually plans a trip with Shiki on summer vacation. After being teased by Akiha and Hisui, he departs to the location, where he finds out that Kwaku had been working there to find like, Shiki's original how childhood take on her to, like, keep that? They then meet oh. in a field of sunflowers, Kohaku's smile glowing more brightly than all of them. Then, after all those events, Shiki Tono rests in the middle of a familiar field at midnight, where he runs into Aoko again for the first time in years, where they talk about senseless things and about what happened. Aoko says that Shiki doesn't have a lot of time to live due to his health, but despite that, Shiki seems to be calm about it, deciding to prioritize Empire what he can do now instead of later, yes, and the two confirm that Shiki's lived his life proudly and has become a great person. Aoko then departs, and Shiki continues relaxing in the brisk night air, before he eventually gets back up and puts bandages over his eyes. In the near future, Shiki goes out on a day out with Arkway where he notices a black cat about to get hit by a truck. Shiki saves the cat but is then hit instead, crazy. leaving him heavily injured and comatose. In reality, the black cat was Len, a succubus familiar under Arkway's ownership, and she places Shiki into a dream world to keep his mind alive, where he repeats the same singular day again and again with differing events that span from Shiki's mood and what his mind subconsciously desires. However, due to Shiki's dual personalities as Nanaya and Tono, as well as Len's decreasing magical energy, the world slowly falls apart. Moreover, his mind creates an embodiment of death word, that symbolizes <laughs> his upcoming death after the accident, which takes the form of Koma Kishima, the person who murdered Shiki's whole family. Thus, Shiki fights his image of death and defeats it, ultimately signing a contract with Len so that he becomes her master, and finally wakes up from the dream world. Furthermore into the future, Shiki hears rumors about another vampire killer in Misaki Town, where he begins to start taking patrols once again in order to protect the city. It is during this time that he runs the Sion Eltnam Atlasia, a magus of the Atlas Institute that came which to Misaki is, in order to look for the dead apostle currently inside it, which was the 13th dead apostle ancestor, Knight of Wallachia. Shiki and Sion fight against mysterious entities such as Red Arquade and Nanaya Shiki made from the fear of the character's hearts given form by Wallachia's reality marvel known as Tatari. The they then fought him in about. various forms, and he even had to fight Sion as she succumbed to her vampire influence in Tatari at one point. It was only after Arquade used Marble Phantasm that the Knight of Wallachia was summoned in his proper form, and subsequently defeated. Shiki Tono is a very simple yet also interesting protagonist. Still on to Shiro, he manages to be a very relatable person where you understand his thought processes thanks to Nasu's first person writing style. And unlike Shiro, a lot of the actions that he takes feel very human. Sure, he may have his own fair share of traumatic incidents, and of course, in certain routes, he definitely does lose his sanity. But the way Shiki acts and thinks in many situations are both very easy to understand and relate to. Shiki is a boy that fears death due to his past experiences with it, and he simply wants to protect those he cares about, thrust into a mysterious world hidden behind the pretense of normal society. In a world of supernatural phenomena and difficult dilemmas, Shiki is just a boy that acts emotions? accordingly to how many oh, viewers would probably oh, find themselves thinking <laughs> they would act in a similar situation. He fears death and fears losing those dear to him, and thus, over the course of the story, he gains drive to protect what he can, the boy who sees death, the one who can kill with little effort, values life more than anything. Now for abilities and quirks, Shiki is a surprisingly well-versed individual with a lot to talk about despite how weak he may seem initially. To get things out of the way first, Shiki is a descendant of the Nanaya family, known to be the most powerful and feared of all four demon hunting families. The Nanaya's main psychic ability is pure eyes, not to be confused with mystic eyes. Pure Eyes are a purely psychic ability unrelated to Magecraft that can only be obtained through destiny and lineage, and they allow the user to see what cannot normally be seen. What Pure Eyes can see depends on the individual. However, with Shiki Nanaya, there are theories that he was able to see the emotions of others. Furthermore, due to his Nanaya heritage, Shiki has an innate instinct that makes him subconsciously feel an urge to kill nearby inhuman beings like demons or vampires. Also as a result of being a Nanaya, 
Shiki was trained in the Nanoya assassination arts, which is a fighting wow. style that heavily so relies yeah, on speed and agility. Both, As said before, practicing the Nanoya arts allows members of the family to act at peak human physique and border on the limits of what a human should be able to do. It allows them to attack extraordinarily quickly and move around the area just as fast. Even with that being said, Shiki is said to have the innate potential to become the strongest of any Nanoya before him, meaning Shiki's speed and agility are unparalleled compared to almost any other human. Furthermore, after his near breath with death, Shiki's pure eyes became able to understand the concept of death and became a form of mystic eyes of death perception. Although technically they're still pure eyes, they are now also considered a hybrid due to the fact that seeing death means the eyes are technically connected to the root. Shiki can use his eyes to see the fated confirmed the destruction of various things and individuals, which take the form of okay, lines of death. Say, it has when so he traces the lines there. of death with a sharp with object, he is able to enact on that fate and target. thus target. kill them no matter what. Makes his eyes target the sense. destined death of something regardless of future. Thus, any defenses, armor, regeneration, or even reincarnation after death will be bypassed. They have a weakness in that they are rare exceptions where nothing can die, and thus cannot be killed, but as long as Shiki can strike the present lines, you can say that his eyes are one of the most terrifying powers that any being could face in the Nosiverse. However, there's a catch. The human mind is not equipped to comprehend the concept of death, and as such, when Shiki uses his eyes, it strains his mind heavily leaving him with painful headaches during their use and occasional anemic attacks. Yeah, gets stronger, Even worse, he if he uses them too much, it could lead to temporary loss of sight, body. or at the far Take end, it. the blood vessels in his eyes and brain could burst, potentially killing him. As such, he has to keep his eyes from seeing death until he absolutely has to use them, and he does so by using a pair of glasses that Aoko Aozaki gifted to him. The glasses are actually mystic eye killers, and they help prevent Shiki's death perception as long as he wears them. More on his eyes, however, as Shiki uses them more, he becomes able to see death further. He soon becomes able to see death points, large areas where the lines converge. When he stabs any of those points, he can hit an entire web of the lines Dang, that connect to it, and allows him to kill much larger things or inflict much more fatal injuries in a single hit. This is actually an ability that the other known death perception user, Shiki Ryogi, does not actually have. Meaning that in terms of killing efficiency, Shiki is potentially once again unparalleled. In Tsukihime though, after his accident, Shiki oh, okay. is a very sick individual, partially due to the original Shiki Tono constantly absorbing his life and partially due to his eyes. Meaning despite his strong capabilities and potential, he doesn't often reach the full extent of them outside of a few exceptions like his fights with Nero and Satsuki. However, after the original Shiki Tono's death, he regains more of his physical prowess and after Arcade's root, Shiki trains even further over the years after he takes on the alias of death, fully realizing his potential as a Nanaya warrior through the arts that were ingrained into his memory. Furthermore, right. his mystic right. so eyes somehow become like that, even stronger, to the point that their power is so immense that his mystic eyes kills cannot contain them anymore. As such, Shiki has to instead wrap sealing bandages around his head in order to restrain them, which also means that in the future, Shiki spends most of his time blind, yet he is still able to fight supernatural creatures despite that. This means that in the future, Shiki Tono becomes one of the most dangerous humans in the Yanasuverse to date, as he is able to kill supernatural beings on a power tier far above human potential. Keep in mind, dead apostle ancestors, as in the rivals of true ancestors, and this human is being feared by them. A lot of people compare Shiki Tono to a nerfed Ryogi since Ryogi has very similar abilities and in the series of Karno Kyokai, her true combat capabilities are shown a lot more in comparison to Tono. However, when you look at what Tono is truly capable of, especially what he becomes in Tsukihime 2, you realize like that statement bitch, really undersells just how obscenely powerful he is. At full potential, You'd be hard pressed to find a better human at killing, and even compared to Dead Apostle Ancestors, one of the most powerful species in Tai Moon, Shiki is able to hold his ground against them and in some cases, defeat them with ease. That is no small feat. Oh, in terms of combat and abilities, his mystic eyes of death perception and superhuman abilities through his Nania training, Shiki Tono is absolutely insane.
and his power cannot be underestimated. Can't wait for people to compare him to servants despite that. Anyway, finally we get to my personal thoughts on Shiki, and well, a lot of you probably know this, but in terms of character, Shiki really? is at the high top for me. In fact, before I learned more about Ayaka Sajo, I'd consider Shiki Tono to be my favorite character in all of Type Moon, because of one thing. His reliability through the story of Tsukihime is insanely engaging and thus convincing. Nasu's immersive writing style really got me to understand Shiki Tono through the story. And as I said in his character segment, Shiki is comparatively a more human that. boy when compared to the like other Type Moon protagonists. You like feel that, how he well. thinks, and when he does something, it's usually convincing how <laughs> believable it is. Even when he loses his sanity due to the things that happen to in him in the right. you can understand how it feels to be in his position, and that's something I love in my characters. Shiki is, in my opinion, a fantastic protagonist and the perfect one for the story of Tsukihime. In a tale about learning about an expansive mystical world and its many rules, Shiki is there with you and holds his own despite being unfamiliar with it. Not to mention how strong and ridiculously powerful he gets in the future, his abilities are so goddamn cool! Death is one of my favorite ideas in the Nasuverse, and Shiki becoming a stone-cold badass knight for Arcwave, pushing the limits of what a human should be capable of, I'm just here like, <laughs> just this is my care. protagonist, Arcwave, this is my matter. boy! <laughs> I love Shiki Tono, he is awesome, and damn do I appreciate him. Thank you, Kinoko Nasu. Thank you so much for writing one of my best boys in fiction. I love him very much, and I will treasure him forever. Anyway, that's all for this huge episode of Type Moon Character Showcase. If you're a fan of this series, I'm glad you stuck for 10 episodes, and hopefully I can keep making more in the future. When that happens, Ooh. consider checking them out. And on that day, I'll see you once again somewhere on the internet. Alrighty, man. That's going to be the internet, man. Shiki Tono, man. Type Moon Character Showcase, man. We are on 53 minutes right now. So if you made it to the end, then most likely I'm just going to say this, guys. I'm going to do this into two parts. I'm going to uh, cut this into two parts. So I'm going to do half, part one, and then the other half for the next day, part two. Whenever I can get this up and render down and everything else for you guys. Let's subscribe to the video, guys. When you got them out, peace.